So what is life for you? Is it a dream? Is it <laughs> is a real? Dream? Is it a million D? What is life for Elon Musk? I find as, as I get older, I find that question to be maybe more and more confusing or troubling or uncertain. Um, I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games, you know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot, and you're like batting it back and forth. I played it. Oh yeah, like me too, exactly. That's I played Pong. <laughs> exactly, it sort of dates you a little bit. But yeah, we, we both played the same game. Um, and that was like, wow, that was a pretty fun game at the time. Um, but now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic, almost photorealistic, and millions of people playing simultaneously. And, um, and you see where things are going with virtual reality um, and augmented reality. And if you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, like even 0.1% uh, or something like that uh, a year, then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Um, and then it seems like, well, how do we know that that didn't happen in the past and that we're not in one of those games ourselves? Interesting, interesting. I mean, could be. <laughs> Everything is possible in life. I mean, there's... I mean, yeah, particularly like things seem to be accelerating to some, to some things. Well, I, do, I mean, do I think that there's some sort of um, master intelligence architecting all of this stuff? I think probably not, because then you have to say, where did the master intelligence come from? Um, so you have, it, it sort of begs the question of, you know. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's sort of, yeah. So. Um, I think really you can explain this with the fundamental laws of, of physics. Uh, you know, it's a um, complex phenomenon from simple elements. So what is life for you? Is it a dream? Is it <laughs> is life a real? Dream? Is it a million D? What is life for Elon Musk? I find as, as I get older, I find that question to be maybe more and more confusing or troubling or uncertain. Um, I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games, you know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot, and you're like batting it back and forth. I played it. Oh yeah, like me too, exactly. That's I played Pong. <laughs> exactly, it sort of dates you a little bit. But yeah, we, we both played the same game. Um, and that was like, wow, that was a pretty fun game at the time. Um, but now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic, almost photorealistic, and millions of people playing simultaneously. And, um, and you see where things are going with virtual reality um, and augmented reality. And if you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, like even 0.1% uh, or something like that, uh, a year, then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Um, and then it seems like, well, how do we know that that didn't happen in the past and that we're not in one of those games ourselves? Interesting. Interesting. I mean, could be. <laughs> Everything is possible in life. I mean, there's, I mean, yeah, particularly like things seem to be accelerating to some, to some things. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Manu, I'm a sophomore at Stanford. And uh, all of your work has been uh, bringing uh, people from place A to B in the, in the fastest and the most environmentally friendly uh, manner. There's also another kind of research happening in the valley where people are trying to avoid transportation at all. We call it virtual reality. Right, so I can be in my dorm and I can see you speaking with the same level of contact on my Oculus Rift as I am here right now taking the Caltrain or the Tesla or even a SpaceX ro rocket in the future. 
Uh, how do you think will virtual reality tie in the future of transportation which you are working on? Thank you. Well, maybe we're in a simulation right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, <laughs> um, some of this feels like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it is going to, from what I've heard of Oculus Rift and, and some of the other immersive technologies, that it's quite transformative. Uh, you really feel like you're there. Um, and, and then when you come out of it, it feels like reality isn't real. Um, so I think we'll see probably less physical movement in the future as a result of the virtual reality stuff. Um, yeah. And when we come out of what is, we're here now into this virtual reality, we'll think it's real? I mean, it's like we're... Well, I, I mean, there's some interesting things here on the virtual reality front. Um, I mean, just on the whole notion of a simulation, which is that if, if, you just, if you extrapolate into the future and say, well, how good, let's say, will video games be in, in 100 or 200 or 1,000 years from now? If, if there's continued improvement um, and you know, you're in a full-body haptic seat, suit with a sort of surround vision and you know, you, it, it, it's, it becomes, beyond a certain resolution, indistinguishable from reality, um, if, and, if, and there were likely to be there were likely to be millions, maybe maybe billions of such simulations. So then, what are the odds that we're actually in base reality? Isn't it one in billions? Is it? I mean, give the, I can give the counter Seems argument, but I'd rather you give the counter argument. Uh, it, obviously, this feels real, <laughs> <laughs> but. But it, it, it may, I mean, it, it seems unlikely to be real. 